Today on Country Squire Radio, that was fast. We're talking windshield you, pipes. You just hopped right in there. I mean, like, but I, I wasn't, I was not. Because you weren't there. I was not prepared. <laughs> That's on me. We Imagine both... that. That's like every week. <laughs> no, no, we are No, it's not. We are, we are. We're professionals every single week. We come in, we come in strong, baby. Oh, when we joke about how we're not professionals, they start to believe us. Oh, no, no, that's we're, right. We're totally professionals. <laughs> uh, also, we've got a uh, pipe question of the week about what happens when you drop your pipe in the water. Uh, and I'm not talking about that cleanly uh, uh, bathtub water. No, don't give away too much. Now. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're, yeah. we're good at that. So <laughs> then we also got some quick fire questions, listener feedback, all the stuff that you love happening right now on Country Squire Radio. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John David. JD. Hey, Bo. How are you, man? Man, I am doing good, sir. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I'm uh, I, I'm exhausted. You know, it's been uh, just a <laughs> heck of a few weeks here, and we're uh, rock and rolling. Had a great uh, International Pipe Smoking Day. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, just event and uh, lots of lots of great sales. So it's always so fun to put, uh, you know, these special shiny new pipes into people's hands, right? Um, you know, everyone waits for this time of year a lot of times to get their uh, favorite new briar or uh, new cob or something. And, um, and it's just it's just been a lot of fun to see folks, you know, they'll, uh, you know, email in pictures or tweet in pictures and say, man, I just picked up this great piece from you. And, <laughs> uh, so excited. A lot of green St. Patty's Day pipes going around. That's, yeah. been, that's been fun. And, uh, yeah, man, it's just, uh, it's, it's a fun time of year. Yeah. Very busy. And, uh, doggone it is, it's cold. It, it's, it's just Dude, cold. It's, it's below freezing right now, right? Well, it's close. Yeah. But I think tonight it's, uh, going to get back down to, um, to 25, That's which, insane. you know, we got this polar, uh, super, uh, vortex or whatever, you know, one of those things that the, the 12 year old boy named, uh, like a super duper polar vortex <laughs> thing. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> you know, and so, uh, yeah, man, it's just, uh, it's just a, just a cold, cold day, but, uh, doing okay. Good. Good, 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 yeah, man. Well, what's up with you, man? Oh, just, uh, getting ready for, uh, for the big move. We've, uh, we have yeah. we've sold our house. I think I'm going to go ahead and say that. Yeah, so no, that's very right. excited. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've purchased a new house in, uh, in Texas. We, uh, actually the studio that we're currently recording in, I actually just got done selling that as well. So we're, we're recording on borrowed man. Everything, time everything's for sale. <laughs> yeah, Golly. everything yeah. must yeah. go. What about this shirt? Yeah. Well, no, I don't want to buy that shirt. You'd have to pay me to take that. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> not gonna happen. Uh, but you know, it it is. You know, I think I think it's. Uh, you know, with with kind of uh, for those that are unaware. Yeah, I'm, I'm moving to Texas. We've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks, and uh, very excited about it. And of course, with the move, uh, there are going to be uh, a few changes, but nothing too terribly major to the show itself. The main thing yeah. for our live audience. Yeah is over the next couple of weeks. Next week will be kind of a big week. It'll be the last show of Bo and John David in Jackson, Mississippi together. Well, yeah, I mean, together here uh, on a regular basis. Surely we'll have a... Oh, yeah, you know, there'll be special occasions here, there. We'll yeah. sell tickets. It'll be great. But <laughs> in terms of, you know... Kind That's of, code for we'll, we'll pay homeless people to come, uh, you know, pretend like they're audience members. Well, we only had to do that five times. I know. <laughs> but so we, but uh, one way or the other. So so last uh, next week will be my last week in Jackson. And so we'll yeah. do a live show. It's going to be a lot of fun. We got a Squire Select all, uh, geared up for it that I'm really excited about. Yep. Uh, and that'll be a blast. Now, following that show, I've got a big move. So for a time, there will be no live show. Now, of course, there will be a podcast. So be sure to check out the podcast for those of you that just listen or watch on YouTube. Um, and as far as the live show returning, there's some technical things that we're going to have to work out. Yeah. And it's not just, I should mention this too. It's not just because of the move to Houston. Uh, there are also... So I don't know, longtime listeners may remember this, or at least longtime live viewers may remember this. There was a time period where we could not broadcast on YouTube. Do you recall this? This is like two or three years ago. No, I've forgotten that. All right. So what had happened was the uh, the way that Google Hangouts Live, the basically the back end that we use for actually doing the streaming oh. on YouTube, they, they kind of took that down. They yeah. introduced a new system, which we tried very, very hard to work with. Yeah, I remember that now. And for whatever reason, we were not approved or they would not allow us to stream through their system or I, I'm, I can't even quite remember because it's been so long. Uh, but fortunately, they went back and kind of said, hey, if you like the old system, you can still do it on the old system. Yeah. If you want the new system, you get on, on the new system. Well, as I understand it, Google Hangouts is, is it looks like they keep on saying they're going to roll it back. And now it actually does look like they're going to roll it back. Okay. 
So, so, so we've got that one more hiccup to kind of get through. Yeah, uh, I mean, that was really kind of delayed a couple of years ago. I guess might as well saying, pile right? on right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in the no, midst of great. everything else that we're trying to uh, to great. get all worked out. Let, let's let's pick up all these extra wrenches we can find and That's throw right. them in the gears that is uh, that that is the life that of, is Country uh, Squire of Bo York and yeah. John David Cole. That's yeah. that's what they, that's what they're trying <laughs> to do. But anyway, all that to say, <laughs> all right. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it. So when we return, uh, the two weeks after next week, so uh, in I guess three, three, three or so weeks, yeah, um, we may be returning to Facebook Live. Okay, we may be broadcasting on Facebook Live. Okay, now I know, I know, I know, many of you don't like Facebook, yep. and I, I hear that, I understand that. Yeah, and 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 as I life too. as life goes on, I'm 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 um. I'm joining your camp. If, the, if that is <laughs> if that is true for you, I'm I'm very much joining your camp. But yeah, I, I can't stand Facebook. But regardless, after having said that, we'll be on Facebook Live <laughs> because some people Maybe. do like Facebook, probably. Yeah, and uh, you know, assuming that the technology all works out, we're set up for it. So that's a all that to say, we do want to make sure that we do have some kind of live show that's occurring as we kind of make yeah. some adjustments. Um, there will be YouTube content. Uh, there will be you know talking heads and that sort of thing, and ideally. There will be the show returning to YouTube in yeah. a more, uh, you know, live fashion. Yeah, we just got to figure it out. But one way or the other, we've always figured it out in the past, and uh, and we're, we're here. We're still here. We're here, and we're excited. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, Bo and I we were discussing our uh, next uh, few months of, um, you know, activity and content. We're just, uh, I, I don't know, a lot of really exciting things on the horizon. So yeah, we're, uh, yeah, we're, we, you know, we're we're very much considering this uh, just an opportunity to, um, you know, carry on what we've what we've started and. Um, yeah, we're fired up. We've got some fun shows we'll be announcing next week uh, that I think a lot of y'all are going to get really hyped about. Um, speaking of getting really hyped, man, I'm really hyped because, ladies and gentlemen, we have now joining us in the uh, International Country Squire Radio Hype Club as a new Squire member, Miss Christina Young. Well, Christina, is that Christian? Oh, I think it's Christian. Mr. Young. Christian Young. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know what's funny is actually, what? my, you know, my wife, uh, my wife's name is Christina. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever said that on the show. But I don't think you have. Yeah, intentionally, I, I, I tend to not do that. <laughs> but I'll, I'll say it just from this standpoint because a lot of times I end up reading Christian and Christina the exact same. Yeah, I don't know if you know this about me. I'm dyslexic. Yeah, no, it's it's come up a time or two. Yeah, Christian, welcome. <laughs> Welcome as a Squire member. We're Absolutely. so glad to we're, have you. We're very grateful. Very uh, grateful. And then also shout out to Alan York. No relation. No relation that uh, you know of. That I'm, that I'm aware of. Yeah. Who is also uh, supporting us at the Patreon level. Oh, and hey, good. if you're listening right now, if you want to make sure that you get this show on a weekly basis, help support it, make it happen. Uh, we we cannot encourage you enough to head over to patreon.com slash country squire radio, where if you become a club member, you get a lot of great perks. If you become even just a patron, you get access to our full archive of uh, 100 episodes waiting with your name on them metaphorically so uh be sure to do that <laughs> patreon.com slash country squire radio y'all are awesome for doing it and shout out to alan and to christian man that's great i can't believe i well that's fine that's no fine. it's good well i mean it's, it's a little confusing because you know alan had uh he shares your last name and then you know that's you know with, what that's with, exactly Chris, with right. christian kind of next to alan there uh, you know, you, you wanted to kind of superimpose your wife's name. That's so, right. And that's that's good. She you, she supports the show in her own way. No, that's the oh, oh, oh <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> All right, man. We have got a wonderful topic. In fact, I'm feeling a little bit uh, you know, you mentioned it's cold outside. It's it's a little windy outside. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it, it is. I, I I'm just reminded, I think I mentioned this before. Why do we sing Baby It's Cold Outside in December when that song is is tailor made? For February. Well, to be fair, and, this and, last and past December, the big question was, why do we sing that song at all? At all, at <laughs> all, right? Yeah, no, that's that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, it man, it, it's cold, it's windy, and uh, you know, we do like to talk about pipe shapes occasionally, and um, and that can be a lot of fun. And so we we thought we'd revisit the topic of uh, shapes and uh, and and bring out the old windshield pipe. Right? Oh yes, the old windshield pipe. Yeah, well, you know, it, it is. It's a you talk about you bring out that old uh you know that uh, uh mid Atlantic uh you know accent or whatever, but it, it is. That's an old. It's an old fashioned curiosity. It's like where did this come from? What is it? And you see one, and if you're not familiar with uh, pipe history or the pipe world, uh, you're kind of it's it's a little off putting. It's like man, that's <laughs> that's strange, you know. And uh, yeah, if you Google windshield pipe I, I love this um you know you'll see a few uh dunhills which we'll talk about shortly uh, but you also find a uh, you know several pictures of windshields that have been impaled by metal pipes <laughs> and it's like well that's that's not really what we're talking about that happens that, a lot in the pipe world though well it could it, it, do, it does because there's all these things that are you know uh, for pipes for pipes and 
um, you, you know, but the greater Google verse doesn't understand. And so you find <laughs> this uh, absurd content online. But um, yeah, so, you know, there are a bunch of odd shapes out there with pipes, right? We've talked about, um, you know, the rolly pipe uh, that kind of has the stem that pivots over the the opposite direction of the bowl. Uh, so you can put it in your jacket pocket. The the opera pipe, which is an oval shaped uh, you know, a uh, bowl. So it's just, uh, fits nicely in your tuxedo pocket. Uh, you know, for those of us that still go to the, to the opera, um, uh, Zeppelin pipes, right. Which are basically cigar shaped pipes where, uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, poke the tobacco in there, put it together and then light it almost like a, like a cigarette or a cigar. Uh, there's weird shapes like the Hawkbill pipe. You know, we've got a pipe that, Ooh. um, you know, it's, it's almost like a ball and then the stem comes up where it's basically level, uh, with the with the top of that ball, the and so it's just bill. got this uh, interesting. Yeah, we we always talk about that. Yeah, sometime. yeah, I'm making a note of that one. Um, shape and you know, there's weird shaped pipes too, like a double, uh, you know, the double chambered pipes, or or even pipes that have two stems on them, or maybe pipes with one stem but two boreholes. You know, just all this weird stuff. Well, you know, a lot of this kind of the 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 genesis in my mind of a lot of these things go back to. Um, you know, the, um, the, you know, the, um, the windshield pipe, right? Why would, you know, why wouldn't you want a, uh, or why, why would you not want to live in a world where there's a pipe with this large, you know, fin on the front of it? Think like, <laughs> you know, 1950s uh, Buick or something, you know, it's got these huge fins off of it, but, but this one's actually kind of functional, right? And it, uh, it's, uh, it's innovative in its own way. So um, yeah, just really interesting. The windshield pipe, um, the innovation of it does go back to the earliest days of modern pipe making. Um, invented by Dunhill in 1904, um, th there is there is such a um, interesting flyer. I sit here losing my glasses, and I have to put them on so I can read this. There's such an interesting flyer that you can find on on Dunhill. Can you imagine now? You, you're just a you're just a normal pipe smoker. You're living at the turn of the 20th century, and then you get this this bizarre flyer in the mail. It says a joy to out a joy to outdoor smokers. Dunhill's patent shield pipe. It, indispensable, uh, it is indispensable to the cyclist, the sportsman, the yachtsman, the automobilist, and the billiard player. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because you need your windshield pipe when you're playing billiards. Yeah, yeah, the windy billiards uh, game. No, that's that's right. That's right. Uh, it is indeed a uh, boon and comfort to every pipe smoker. Uh, it costs no more than an ordinary pipe, and every bowl is warranted not to burn or crack. Uh, and then, of course, you have this picture of this beautiful uh, Dunhill billiard uh, shaped pipe. Like a and, sketch of one. And it's, it's a sketch, right? Uh, you know, we're talking about 1904 here. But then there's this, you know, this there's this curiosity. Can you imagine getting this? And then there's this, um, you know, uh, there's this billiard pipe that kind of has this fin on the front of it. It's a, it's a, a large sliver that's kind of sticking up higher on the front side of the pipe than on the back side. So, um, and, and this is your first introduction to the idea of a windshield pipe. And you're like, man, the world's changing. You know, we just went from, um, you know, buggy whips to uh, the, the, you know, combustible <laughs> engine. And now we're, uh, you know, talking about getting into World War One here. And man, you're throwing these, uh, you know, these pipes with these, you know, large uh, shield things on them. What, you know, just slow down world, slow down. Wow. Um, but, uh, but that's kind of where we're at. So um, in, really interesting, you know, they, um, they, you know, came out about this, uh, you know, really when Dunhill did debut this, it, it predated their identity as a pipe maker. OK, now let's think about that. Right. Huh, Dun Dunhill, a yeah. uh, very old company. And we're talking about 18, 18, uh, 80s or early and it and you know the windshield pipe it predates they they didn't even open their first tobacco and pipe shop until 1906 and this is a 1904 invention and so you got to remember at the time uh, Alfred Dunhill you know he inherited this business that was basically a um, a harness business for horses okay so so that's how Dunhill got started Isn't you that know, crazy nowadays you get online and you Google you know Alfred Dunhill and you'll find all these uh you know fancy men, you know, wearing cardigans and stuff or, you know, leather, uh, you know, handbags that are made of, you know, endangered, you know, por porpoise blubber or some crap. <laughs> but, you know, like, but, but, but Dunhill, it, it started as a, as a harness company for, um, you know, for, for horses. Now, Alfred was smart. He, he realized, we've talked about this in the history of Dunhill before, but he realized with the, in, you know, the advent of the automobile that, you know, there was going to be a real, luxury market uh in the 1890s for 
uh, driving accessories for cars. And so he very strategically started to pivot the wow. uh, pivot the you know force of his company from uh, you know horse and carriage accessories into automobile accessories, right, driving yeah. accessories. Right? Imagine um, you know you've got this luxury. Uh, you know, brand that's that's focused around accessories, but it's for the the modern driver, which then was a new thing, right? That's that it shows just how much he understood his industry. Because I mean, like you know, we've oh we've talked gosh. about this before as well. But you know, back in the day, I used to work for a uh, telecom company, and we were working. We had this solution that we were going to kind of sell to. Uh, newspapers as a way for them to drive more traffic to their website. Yeah, yeah. And I remember I had a meeting with a newspaper company that will remain nameless. Uh, and the guy <laughs> almost ran me out of like his office on a rail. It said, he's like, you want to drive traffic to my website? We are a paper company. And I was like, oh, well, if you're a paper company, you're going to die. <laughs> like, like, and but that's if, the last time y'all spoke. But if you're a news company, <laughs> then you're you're looking for every single avenue to get get the story out, yeah. get the news out. No, and that's so right. You're not yeah. beholden to one thing. So that's if right. you're in the transportation industry, in right. the transportation accessory industry, that's smart thinking it, back it, in it, whenever it was. It does. It makes a lot of sense. You know, I mean, the world again. We live in a very changing world, and the world is changing. Uh, you know, now as it, as it was then. Uh, maybe at a different pace, but but also, you know, it was very rapid. And so, you know, this this guy, he had a very uh, good finger on the pulse of what was going on. Right. He saw the writing on the wall for, uh, you know, the it, it goes back to the old, uh, you know, uh, adage about the the guy with the that made all the best buggy whips in the world. You know, mm -hmm. it, well, all of a sudden he doesn't have a, a place to pedal his wares because there's no more buggies to whip. Right. <laughs> and so. Um, yeah, you know, Dunhill, he, he was making these luxury driving, uh, you know, accessories. And um, and so, you know, the the pipe fit into that because it went along with all his other things. Right. It was very much uh, meeting a very new need that, you know, some people realized wasn't even a, a need yet. Or some people were probably even uh, maybe initially confused, but then realized, oh, wait, this would help me smoke my pipe while behind the wheel, um, which, uh, you know, is just a, a kind of a fascinating thing. So um, it started to get uh, to give Dunhill this reputation of innovation, right? Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, you know, back from the very beginning, Dunhill had, um, you know, it, again, the concept of innovation, you know, shortly thereafter with the windshield pipe they had, um, you know, the steel inner tube on the inside of the pipe, this, uh, you got to remember, this is a time before the uh, advent or before common usage of pipe cleaners. And so, well, how do you keep the inside of your pipe clean? Well, you put a little, you know, stainless steel tube on the inside of the, the shank and the stem, it keeps it real clean. And when you, when it gets super dirty, you can either wash it out or replace it. Right. And so, uh, you know, that's just one of those extra things of innovation that they, that they came up with. We need to revisit the pipe cleaner. When, when did that, I always just assumed in my head that one went hand in hand. Uh, yeah, no, that's right. I mean, you you would certainly think so, but huh. think think about. I mean, the pipe is one thing, right? We talk about okay, well, you either you know are smoking something out of uh, out of clay or out of meerschaum or briar, um, but but think about the modern, you know, techniques of efficiently and cheaply, you know, creating a small piece of wire covered in cotton and then distributing them, right? Hmm, yeah. well, I mean, it's not you know today that sounds really easy, but you know back in you know eighteen ninety that's a that's a different conversation, Absolutely, right? Yeah, yeah, just like anything. I mean, look at the history of, you know, something as simple as Kleenex or toilet paper, things we just take it grant, you know, uh, for granted today. Uh, toilet paper, you know, uh, well, that's a that's a different <laughs> podcast. Um, but anyway, so you know, it gave this, uh, you know, Dunhill this kind of, um, you know, a reputation of innovation. Even the white spot that has become synonymous with their logo, right? right? Well, how did that start? I mean, Dunhill, they had the name of their company uh, stamped on the side Spilled of the pipe. Spilled some vanilla ice so, cream. <laughs> on, no, <I'm> just <laughs> <laughs> they had the name of their, uh, you know, company stamped on the side of the bowl. Why would they need a white spot? Um, it wasn't like that they needed a logo. Well, the white spot was the the purpose of it was so that you would know what direction to put your stem on. <laughs> you know, if you, the white the white spot needed to face up, and so it, it it would tell tell you from the manufacturer standpoint that this was the upside of the stem, and so that's where the white spot came that's from. That's crazy. It was, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's all very practical, which is kind of fascinating. So, um, the pipe was an oddity in that you know, sense that, okay, you've got this windshield pipe, this uh, large, uh, you know, kind of fin on the front of the pipe to protect it from the wind. Um, but, um, you know, it's, um, 
but but it's also a symbol of their innovation. So um, again, you know, if if you're not able to uh, you know, if you haven't seen a windshield pipe before, imagine a a pipe bowl where the front of the pipe is much taller than the back of the pipe. And so you've got a kind of a, a step down uh, style uh, effect there, like the, you know, almost a, a little plateau and then it pivots, it steps down a little bit. And then the back of the bowl is much lower um, and it, it therefore creates a, a, a shield uh, to protect the top of your bowl from, um, you know, it, just long exposure to to wind. That's that's the idea. It's a two level effect with a little path running through it. The path, the path, the path. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. I'll give somebody else another visual thing. Every single time I see a windshield pipe, you know what it makes me think of? What? Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. Or specifically Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber. Why? I've made this reference before, but look, here, I'll, I'll throw up a picture for you. But everybody else knows exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, actually, I see that. Yeah. His lightsaber. The little lip thing. On yeah, had yeah. the kind of the lip thing that was going on where one side was kind of higher than the other. And Only a real fanboy would, would, would know that. I'm waiting for somebody to develop a metal pipe that is styled off of Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. honestly, that looks yeah. exactly like a, if you had a metal windshield pipe. <laughs> I'm not which, wrong. which I think there are some out there actually is kind of interesting. Yeah. But like but, that's what I want. I yeah. want to see that happen. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, you know, so there um it, the windshield effect on a pipe, this idea of putting the large uh chunk of briar on the top, you know, front part and uh letting it step down to the back. It, you know, originally was uh more common in billiards. You do see it occasionally in bulldogs, um, you know, Rhodesians. Um, you know, uh, pipes of different of different shapes, but uh, most of these pipes are going to be straight pipes. This is a very old fashioned, a very um, you know, uh, not very commonly used uh, type of uh, you know design on a pipe. But it's one of those that has its place in pipe history, um, and, and really, in some ways, is also the precursor to the modern uh, wind cap. Right? Uh, you've got the you know a pipe that uh, is able to uh, you know protect it from the the wind or sure. the, the weather, well, your wind cap does the same thing. So we're going to start manufacturing these little metal wind caps and either, you know, attach them to the top of the bowl, like those German uh, style Bavarian pipes or, uh, you know, the, the modern Dunhills or, or other brands, uh, Sir Jacopo and others, they have created these integrated wind caps with this beautiful sterling silver and uh, they're hinged and have these little vents on the side and uh, flippable, um, you know, uh, things that you can, uh, you know, open and close to tamp your pipe and all that type of thing. Uh, even down the road, it, you know, we saw the the idea of a flippable uh, hinged, um, uh, you know, uh, wind cap that's kind of integrated into the bowl itself. Flippable, and so, hinged yeah, so, wind cap. Yeah, so think about, uh, you know, if you've got a bowl, but but then the bowl itself, the top of the bowl, right, right, they, right, they've okay. actually shaved it to where it, it's it, it pivots. It's kind of hard to uh, describe. It's almost got like an axle on there that it can uh, that it can pivot on. So, um, yeah, just really interesting. It was, uh, you know, it, it shows you as simple as pipe smoking is. There's always been that that one thing that's like, how do we make it more effective? How do we how do we you know make it more um you know, appealing. How do we um, how do we solve a problem that's there, right? And so th this goes along with the same thing we talk about the Peterson P lip or the system pipe or um, you know the um, all those uh, you know metal pipes that develop that we've talked about, like the uh, Kirsten pipes that you know let's cool the smoke down with this uh, chamber or uh, you know we've got all kinds of bizarre stingers and filters. These are all things that are taking a very simple concept, a wooden pipe uh, with a hard rubber stem, <laughs> and they're uh, they're introducing new concepts to try to um, you know just try to make it a better experience maybe for some. And so um, you know is this a really popular design? Well, not really. It is one of those things I feel is in the pantheon of, of, of pipe history. Oh, I like that. I like the pantheon of pipe history. You know, it it there is something very iconic about it, and I love how the uh, the the joy to outdoor smokers flyer that you're reading off of, and I've now shared on our Twitter handle for anybody that wants to go check that out. I, I love how they kind of define who their like like their their targeted clientele is. A yachtsman. Yeah, I could see a yachtsman uh, even today. A, a yachtsman. Like, yeah, he would smoke that. Or like an automobilist. Yeah, which at the time was, I mean, gosh, if you're an automobilist, that was like being a yachtsman today. Yeah, right? You might as well just be a yachtsman. <laughs> exactly. But that's the thing, because like I think about like a like a captain of a ship would have more of like a deep bend type of pipe, you know, with like a big, you know, robust bowl attached to it or something of that nature. Whereas this is more of that kind of like um, uh, 
a Wolf of Wall Street type of you yeah. know, dude who's like yeah. rocking that. Now, in the flyer that you have, there's two different kinds. One, is, of course, is more of like the straight bowl, where the other one is more of a bulldog yeah. with the shield. I don't think I've seen the first type in terms of like more modern types, that sort of thing. Yep. I don't think I've ever seen a bulldog. A, wind, a windshield pipe that, that was a bulldog. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it Very, very uncommon. I've never seen one in person myself, uh, actually. And so... Um, yeah, you just wonder, like, how are they going to develop these types of things and and who would buy it? It kind of, um, you know, just has a bizarre look to it. But it's um, yeah, it's one of those things that they they wanted to create some, uh, you know, variation to, you know, appeal to different tastes. And and uh, and so they try their best to. So, um, yeah, really interesting. You know, over the years, of course, we we've talked a lot about Dunhill in this episode because Dunhill did invent the windshield pipe. But, um, you know, it became a, maybe not quite a rite of passage, but also. But maybe a, um, I don't know, you know, really accomplished pipe makers would uh, use this particular shape to show some of their skill. Think of kind of the um, the blowfish, you know, we've talked about mm -hmm. the blowfish shape before. Yeah. And gosh, if you can perfectly execute a blowfish, like you've kind of made it, you know, well, with a windshield <laughs> pipe, you know, you've got, uh, you know, some of these. Uh, you know, higher end pipe makers, they know they're not going to sell a lot of these things, but, um, you know, they, they are going to produce a few just to say, hey, look, I, look what I can do kind of deal. And, and that's, uh, you know, it makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like, um, you know, it, it, I don't know, designing anything, it, you know, one of these car companies that's going to, you know, do something just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and they know that, you know, well, you're not going to uh, probably sell a diamond encrusted tire, but like, you know, you, I'm going to make one to show you that I can. Yeah, right? Like a so, <laughs> solid gold iPhone that existed for two seconds. Right, ex exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny. One of our uh, vendors um, that, that we, that I regularly order from just to get knickknack supplies for the shop, they have uh, in their catalog available for purchase a, a Zippo lighter, just a normal little Zippo lighter. Yeah. And the, the retail cost of it, this is the, the retail MSRP cost of the Zippo is fifteen thousand dollars and i you know every time i get on that little portal to, to look at some of their smoking accessories i just kind of giggle and say yeah maybe next month you know <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know it's just yeah it's like well i'm gonna buy a is it diamond studded what's going on there I, you know i can't remember i think it it's solid gold with uh some oh kind of gosh. gems on it yeah but it, it's probably you know been treated with some kind of uh you know it's got the infinity stones e on it. eagle feathers or something it was you know it, from the collection of Abraham Lincoln or uh, who knows. Yeah. I don't know. Yes. Anyway, yes. Um, his, Zippo. <laughs> his, his personal, his personal Zippo, right. That he, you know, stole from the hands of uh, Stonewall Jackson or something. I, who knows? Right. Yeah. Right. But anyway, um, yeah. So, but, but, you know, they're beautiful ones. We've seen uh, a lot of uh, artisans from Eastern Europe and America, uh, the Danish school, you know, we talk about Danish pipes a lot, beautiful Danish pipes. A lot of times they have, uh, they, they, uh, you know, employ the use of exposed plateau and bark, a little more often than our English and um, and Italian counterparts, but uh, you know you'll see these Danish pipes. Sometimes they will leave a higher plateau on the front of the pipe hmm. than they will on the back of the pipe, and so it kind of um, you know the the bark that exposed plateau on the front it'll almost um, you know kind of simulate the idea of a windshield pipe uh, in a in a freehand style, which is kind of fascinating. So, um, but you know. All that to say, we still think of Dunhill uh, when we think of these pipes, and um, you, you know they they are not particularly common. Uh, you know, even as a Dunhill dealer at the Squire, you know we, um, you know we it, it's not something easy to order or whatever. But um, you know, but when we do see them, they're like, huh, yeah, they still make those. So. Now I have to ask. I mean, it, the flyer that you're reading says patent, right? Yeah. And I mean, I'm not misreading that. That do no. they actually own a patent on it? Because well, I mean, I feel like I see non Dunhill shield uh, windshield. Pipes. No, you do. Yeah, that's what we we're just mentioning. Uh, you know, here's a, a I found a beautiful one on uh, you know a, a, one of the online retailers. Right, um, but that's not you know, a. But that's not a Dunhill. Well, yeah. and it, isn't that um, um, is that a a comp, like a uh, manufacturer pipe right there? Uh, well, th no, this is an artisan pipe, right? right. So you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure they have some kind of patent on it, or maybe did have a patent on it that, um, you know, expired or something because they, you know, they obviously said that. Or they're but, just not enforcing it. <laughs> yeah, or they, or maybe they can't. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, that's, um, yeah, that's kind of the idea. People, regardless, folks over the years have mimicked the, the style, and, um, you know, and, and it's just, uh, just one of those things that maybe a, uh, uh, you know, premier carver, carver artisan will kind of. Uh, play with occasionally just to say, hey, look what I got. 
I tell you what, man, there's some artisan pipe carvers that I would love to see do some amazing things with a windshield if they wanted to or if they could patent wise. And of course, I'm talking about the artisanal, wonderful designers, <laughs> developers, innovators in their own right over at Missouri Beer Shop. No, that's right. That's right. <laughs> man, one thing, uh, of course, that we love and we don't mention a lot are, uh, you know, well, we do mention a lot freehand pipes on the show. Uh, we talked briefly about the opportunity of, a, you know, a freehand pipe maker to maybe leave some of that plateau on the front end of the pipe uh, exposed a little differently than on the back end and uh, just make it a real interesting kind of windshield pipe uh, there for the uh, the uh, the freehand style pipe. There are freehand style corn cobs and a lot of hey. folks don't know that. Yeah, but um, man, for a long time, Azir Mearsham has had a very popular line. It's a premium line. It's one of their more uh, more expensive pipes, but it certainly uh, is is worth the extra fee because it's just a real um a real stunning pipe and the quality of it is unmatched the freehand corn cob pipe uh from missouri mirrorsham retails for 34.99 and um is a work of art in its own self a deep conical shaped bowl dark stain coating rusticated bowl an Italian acrylic bit give this pipe a unique and distinctive appearance. Like other premium pipes, the freehand has a genuine hardwood insert in the bottom of the bowl. Also available in an uncoated natural white cob or a natural red cob finish. Oh, wow. uh, this pipe also serves as a memorable gift to discerning pipe collectors. As a collectible, the dark stain coated finish is also available on a Missouri red cedar plaque. Uh, see the product description for details. And so, um, yeah, it's cool. You can actually get this freehand corn cob pipe um, uh, mounted on a plaque, which is kind of neat, makes a great gift. Um, but the freehand cob, just really interesting. They've kind of, uh, it, it's a conical Dublin shaped uh, style bowl. It's a large bowl uh, with that hardwood bottom that they're so uh, so well known for it's such high quality and then they kind of rough up the top to simulate that uh, you know that that Danish style uh, exposed plateau on there so just a really beautiful pipe a handsome pipe and uh, one of those that's good for a couple hours sitting on the porch it's awesome man yeah I, I definitely think I, I prefer me for me personally I like the the black finish to it I think it really uh, pops but hey if you've got a freehand corn cob from Missouri Meerschaum be sure to smoke it this week take a picture when you do tweet it into us we love to retweet those out to let the good folks at Missouri Meerschaum know that you appreciate them for sponsoring this show. All right, man, we've actually got a uh, pipe question of the week uh, that is Missouri Meerschaum related. This is coming in from Daniel. He says, I recently went on a day trip to Mississippi's own Bay St. Louis. Hello. I was, I was a still, it was a still morning and I was able to have a pleasant smoke on the beach. But as I was tamping, I dropped my Missouri Meerschaum pipe into the water. Is there any way I can still smoke it? Has the Mississippi Gulf Coast water ruined it forever? Any help will be uh, will be appreciated. Thank you. And again, that is from Daniel. If you dropped it in the water in the Mississippi Gulf Coast, take your pipe, burn it, and bury it in the backyard. Mm. <laughs> but get a hazmat suit. First. No, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. We're not known for having the, the, the most beautiful uh, Gulf beaches due to the Mississippi Sound. We have a, a barrier island out there. And so... Um, you know, our beaches in Mississippi, uh, although we have great seafood and all that kind of stuff, they're not as you know pretty as areas where they don't have that uh, those barrier islands out there. So, And while um, all the fish are good eating fish, they are some of the ugliest fish you'll ever see. Yeah, they're gnarly. They, yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> it's it's it is bizarre to go fishing down at yeah. that uh, outlet. Right no, there. it is, man. It is. I, I love the Mississippi Gulf Coast. It's beautiful down there. The mm. water's just, you know, it's not maybe not quite as pretty as, uh, as some of our uh, other Gulf Coast counterparts there. But um, yeah. No, I mean, you know, um, smoke it, <laughs> clean it out. It's a Missouri Meerschaum pipe. So uh, certainly if you dried it out quickly, the water uh, won't have hurt it uh, too badly. The thing is, you know, there there may be some kind of bacteria or something that can get in that pipe. So I would maybe take some high, um, you know, grain alcohol or uh, maybe even some isopropyl alcohol and scrub that pipe out really good just to make sure you get anything out of there that um, that might be creeping around. So um, otherwise, you know, the good thing about having a Missouri Meerschaum pipe or any pipe um, that's inexpensive is that, well, you know, if it's a Pick it up on the shelf and go get you another one, hmm. uh, which would be good. So, yeah, I don't I don't think the Gulf Coast water probably ruined it forever, but yeah, I'd probably give it a pretty good cleaning. All right, so let me ask you this: <laughs> Would the would the would the bag of rice trick help at all? Well, you know, really with the with the rice, you're you're talking about put like when you drop your uh, smartphone into water and exactly. then you put it in there, and um, yeah, I, I 
it'd be worth a shot. You know, I, I think that's more, you know, to dry it out, essentially. Um, you know, I think the cob would probably dry out pretty easily. But um, I have no experience, you know, to be honest with you, dropping a corn cob pipe into, you know, water and then, you know, trying to revive it. My biggest fear would not be the drying out of the pipe, but just making sure that, um, you know, if you're in the, you know, brackish water of the, you know, Gulf Coast to <laughs> make sure there's nothing, you know, creeping around in that pipe. So, um, yeah, I, I think if you cleaned it out really good, you'd be, um, and then let it dry, you know, certainly let it dry. I think you'd be in good shape. All right. Well, there you go. Great question, Daniel. And hey, if you've got a pipe question of the week that you'd like to send us in, please do so at show at countrysquireradio.com. Again, that's show at countrysquireradio.com. All right, man. Quick fire questions. Ow! All right. Quick fire <laughs> questions. Of course, brought to us by awesome t-shirts available soon at from the Country Square. That's right. Sometime soon, actually. actually that's exactly right. Yeah. Definitively and, and, next week. And this time we mean it. Definitively yeah. next week. <laughs> Definitively next week. That's I, right. I'm going to speak it into existence. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Quick fire questions. Name it and claim it. Yep. Here we go. These are actually from uh, Stephen Mario Joseph Cardello. And this is what SMJC has for us. Are you ready, sir? Yes. Okay. IPA or a stout? Uh, nine times out of 10, IPA. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you know, I, I'm getting to where I enjoy some stouts, but yeah, I like a, a like that kind of bitiness of the IPA and a, a little crisper beer, I think. Yeah. I mean, it, it's got to be, it's got to be as cold as it is right now for me to drink a stout. Yeah. And so today I might choose stout. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. overall, I think no, it's good. Bourbon or rye? Uh, I'm going to go with bourbon. There are ryes that I've found that I really enjoy, but I think on average, I like the uh, the sweetness of a bourbon. Yeah, that's... um, I've been on a rye kick lately. Yeah. I love bourbon. Obviously, like bourbon is is generally well scotch. If, all right, so... Hmm. All right, so the question is, if you put in front of me my favorite bourbon, which at the moment used to be Buffalo Trace, but at the moment is Old Soul from uh, from Cathead. Yeah, our lo one of our, our local distillery here. Yes, Yeah. more on them next week. Uh, and then if you put that in front of me, and then my favorite rye, which for the moment is actually Bullet Rye, which I don't like Bullet Bourbon, but I like the rye. Yeah, me too, actually. What am I going to choose? Mm. Roll the dice. I do. <laughs> Probably, oh man, all right. Ah, mm, I'll go bourbon. I'll go with bourbon. Yeah, on average, you on probably average, would. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, you can be on kicks though, right? I mean, we go on yeah, a ride kick. Yeah, I'm on a ride kick. But that's yeah. the thing. I'll be off the ride kick. I'll, I'll never get off the bourbon. <laughs> uh, high church service or contemporary? Uh, yeah. So, you know, it, this is a question, you know, for me as an Anglican, I have to go with uh, with high church. Yeah, so so high church. I mean, kind of for for those well, we're uninitiated. About, yeah, for those that maybe aren't familiar with uh, Christianese, you know, we're talking about like uh, a, a very liturgical worship service that uh, you know Roman might, Catholic carryover. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it has more of the um, you know smells and bells, right? That kind of uh, that kind of <laughs> idea, and uh, versus you know maybe more uh, more modern contemporary. I don't know. I'm a I'm a sucker for good liturgy. I'm gonna have to go with high church. Okay. All right. All right. Um. I I. I uh... If those are the two options, I'll go with high church because <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of contemporary. Now, that being said, you know, we're about to be visiting new churches and everything. And yeah, in one your new hometown. That's right. And the one that we're leaning towards is kind of more of a contemporary style. Yeah. Um, but having grown up, like I always associate kind of the 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 classical, you know, high church with Christmas because uh, growing up, well, all we the would, midnight services and that kind of stuff. You know, well, yeah. that, but then also my family's Catholic in, in Baton Rouge. And so every single Christmas we would go to mass. And so that was always kind of part of it. Um, so between the two, I would, I would kind of go there. Yeah. I, you know, there are some contemporary styles. I should I tell this story. I think I'm going to tell this story. Okay. When we were visiting a church in, in Jackson, I won't name the name. I won't name the church. Uh, this was a while back. So it's not, it's not a new church. So this is a while back. We were visiting the church. My wife and I go in, they give us like, you know, our, our orange mocha frappuccino. Yeah. And have a sit down. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's the, it's the very, I mean, just, just textbook, like flashing skinny lights jeans. and yeah. skinny jeans uh -huh. and uh, yeah. pointing to my tattoo to show you I have a past. <laughs> All of that, that when it came time, <laughs> when funny. it came time for uh, communion, I didn't partake because I was like, after the sermon and everything, I was like, I have no idea what these people believe. <laughs> I have literally no idea. Yeah, what maybe these I'll wait till believe. next time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> I do. I do like a little bit more of a guided sermon series, which, which you know, the oh, that's good. The liturgy is always a fan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, to, to each his own. But yeah. I, I'm a sucker for the other. Yeah. All right. So uh, <laughs> long. Yeah, and I'm not. I, yeah, I should. I should also say not yeah. judging anybody. To each his own. The, yeah. To each. To each his own. Contemporaries. Yep. Though. That I is agree. very in. It's I very agree. contemporary. It, it is. Anyway, <laughs> send your emails to. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Right to John David. To yeah. John David. <laughs> uh, long unruly beard or short trimmed beard. I'm going to go with a short trimmed beard or maybe a long trimmed beard. But yeah, if I had to pick between the two, I, you know, there's something about like having your beard kind of kept. Yeah. I, I don't know. For me that, uh, it, it, it drives me crazy when my beard gets kind of uh, scraggly and I, I don't know. I just, uh, I kind of feel like a caveman. It's like, well, if I'm going to have a beard, I'm, you know, even if it's a big beard, like let, let's trim it up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So I, I, I prefer the short trim beard. Uh, I'm not good at maintaining that. And so I end up. With a kind of meat. Yeah. And uh, hey, if you got some quick fire questions, send them in show at countrysquireradio.com. Again, that's show at countrysquireradio.com. Listen to feedback. Mm-hmm. All right, man. This is, I got to read this from Portland Paul. Yeah. He says, uh, dude, I'm quote, low church all the way every week, high church on holidays. Yeah. So it sounds like it's kind of a similar uh, experience for you. Yeah. 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 That's probably, you know, I, for, for one thing, the whole high low thing, I, I, I'm not too keen on that terminology in general because of what's implied. However, for, it kind of makes one sound better than the other. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, so I, I get that. Only only using those categories as point of reference, as was presented yeah, in the quick that's fire a good questions. Way to put it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, not meaning to down the quote unquote low church, and not even necessarily meaning to down the contemporary church. Although yeah. I input necessary in there, so take that for what you will. Uh, <laughs> man, uh, got a great uh, great chat going on on the YouTube as well. Uh, Toby Spry saying if. If Country Squire would do a $100 mystery box, would you want John David or Bo to pick your backy? Says, I would want one from both. Oh, wow. You would want John David Cole to pick your tobacco. $100 mystery box. Yeah. Golly. Yeah. We should do, we, should we do that sometime? There's some good stuff in there. Yeah. Man. Legally speaking, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Blue Dog says, greetings and happy Mardi Gras. We're remiss for not saying that. Oh, that's happy right. Mardi Gras yeah. No, this week is the beginning of, uh, beginning of Lent. Don't too. give up. Don't give yeah. up alcohol for Lent because we got a drink from my last episode yeah no no you don't don't worry about okay that. yeah right. i That'll tried be... that a few years ago that was that was pretty difficult yeah that, that's yeah. that's never good. and, and it, it was good yeah i mean I'm, it, you know there's a lot of you know repentance and all that other stuff so yeah i'm giving up <laughs> i'm giving up sweets this year that's that's the game plan but um that's good uh also let's see uh road glide sully says uh, afternoon from texas shout out to uh to texas oh, that's good all right now this is interesting so we got um uh maybe some conflicting uh uh, uh, uh thoughts here so uh, Ron Hardcracker Ward says, uh, John, the Pope's with the hinge, uh, John, the pipes with the hinged cover is sometimes known as a hurricane pipe. Yeah. yeah. Says, Mine is pretty handy if you want a smoke, uh, if you want to smoke a pipe while driving with the top down on the highway. Yeah. Now, our very own Pappy Joe chimes in, says the pipe with the hinged cover are actually called hunters and originated in the uh austrian and bavarian areas of europe yeah a so lot of times you'll see both? those as uh as you know bavarian pipes or whatever but yeah i think uh yeah i think that but those are um are great points yeah interesting all right yeah. so they, they they have been referred to as both yes from that standpoint yes okay um yeah, yeah it's kind of you know with uh pipe um you know stuff we've got folks that will call um uh Gosh, there's like a, you know, people will refer to it as a Hungarian pipe versus an umpal and all this other kind of stuff. I don't know. I mean, everyone's got their own uh, verbiage. But but yeah, these pipes have been around a long time and have just a, a great tradition, um, you know, particularly because they're so practical. Um, uh, Portland Paul also mentions, you know, we talk about just kind of the, um, you know, figuring out over the next few months here where uh, some of this stuff is going as far as our live show goes. The live show uh, in some form will be around. We're going to get that worked out. Um, you know, we don't anticipate it staying uh, in a place for terribly long. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, where, where people, uh, you know, are going to, you know, not be able to participate or whatever. But he does say uh, Facebook Live makes me sad because I do not have a Facebook account. Uh, despite how much I love you guys, I have my boundaries. Brother, we're we're smelling what you're stepping in. Yeah, I, no, I, I'm, we're I'm, all I'm, there. I'm, I'm with you, dude. Yeah. So don't. Uh, uh, we hope. Facebook. 
from like the way that they've structured themselves that they want to compete in the video market is very interesting. I mean, this has nothing to do with pipe tobacco, at all, <laughs> but I could get into it. Well, let's go, you know, to the future of uh, that's you know, kind of the format and everything. So yeah, that's, that's fair. Well, so you know, they they clearly want to be a player, um, uh, not like media player. I mean, well, they do want to be a media player, but they want to be like an industry player, so to speak. Yeah. Um, from that standpoint, and especially if you look at the amount of time spent viewing video on Facebook and then compound that with the amount of time that the average person spends looking on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of this, it's, it's this beast that's kind of hard to fight. Now that being, well, because of that, they're able to tailor their market where they require you to have an account to get into the content, which is very frustrating. Um, for a number of reasons, for exactly the reason that you yeah. mentioned Portland, because, yeah. you know, uh, folks like you folks, like honestly me, if I didn't have this company, uh, I, I would not be on Facebook. I, I don't like Facebook, but the only way to stream that content is through a Facebook account. They won't allow us to embed the player, at least at this point onto our website, which is the preferred method of how I would, you know, enjoy people yeah. to get the content is yeah, actually sure. go to countrysquireradio.com view the, view the player from that standpoint. What I like about YouTube is it makes it open and you're able to do that. Um, there are other opportunities and there are other things available. One thing that we could potentially explore, I'll just, if, if it's all right, I'll just pull the curtain back yeah. completely here. Sure. It's great. Um, you know, one thing that we could look at completely exploring is not going live and going pre-recorded, in which case we can then put, upload the video to several platforms, including YouTube very easily. But you wouldn't get the live experience, which, to be honest, is kind of the main reason why we do it. Kind of the point. Exactly. Of it, yeah, for us. I mean, we're a podcast first, but we do this, uh, you know, the the live recording because we get to interact with y'all. Exactly. Yeah. And so so that's that's a that's a large part of it. Um, there are other services that I've used in the past. For example, there was a service called or there is a service called Mixler, which is an audio only streaming service that we've used for Flash TV Talk um, and some other shows, but primarily that one. And the nice thing about that one is there's a chat that you can kind of go back and forth on. But again, the trade-off is that you don't have the um, you don't have the embeddable nature of it where people could just go to countrysquareradio.com, click play, and then go about their business without having to worry about anything. That's really what I prefer to do. I, you know, I'd, I'd prefer to have something of that of that nature. Yeah. Well, more, more you know, well, uh, more, more down the road. But yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. It's getting highly technical. Don't don't, don't fret. Yeah, All that we, to uh, say, yeah. we're very much thinking about this, <laughs> and we're very much like it's it's a it's a priority. We're, yep. We will not we will not disappear uh, off the face of the the live planet, so to speak. Yeah. All right, I, I agree. Also, man, we got a uh, <laughs> we also got a review on iTunes uh, from uh, Great Barcia. Yeah, he says, uh, great program. Been listening to this podcast as a new pipe smoker and really enjoy it. It's been great listening to interviews and I feel more knowledgeable. Thank you for the great podcast, great products from the store. Rivendell and Second Breakfast have been two of my favorite blends to enjoy. Uh, man, very, very kind. Thanks to great Barcia. We, uh, we appreciate you, brother. All right. Well, hey, and if you've got uh, some feedback for us, let us know via the iTunes reviews. Those are a great way to help let folks know that you uh, enjoy the show. Uh, head over to iTunes, write us review. Also, if you want to help this show financially, um, we need it. <laughs> Please do <laughs> head over to patreon.com slash country square radio, where you can uh, support the show. You can join the club. You can become a patron. There's a lot of great perks for if you do, if you're a club member, for example, you get access to our, uh, our Squire lounge online closed, uh, closed group that we would love for you to be a part of. Or if you just want to be a patron, that's cool too. You get uh, full access to our first 100 episodes that are exclusive to you, uh, exclusive to patrons of Country Squire Radio. Again, that's patreon.com slash country squire radio. Also, you can keep up with us throughout the week. You can follow us on the Twitters at Squire Radio or me. I'm at the real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole, or you can get us at the shop at, at underscore country squire. All that information and more can be found at country squire radio.com. All right, man. Had fun, man. Yeah, it was good. Talking about windshield pipes. Yeah, man. That makes me want to go get one. Shielding the wind. I know. I'm 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 on this whole Luke Skywalker thing though. <laughs> I really do think that that's a that that would be a cool pipe. I, I kind of want to take uh the image that I showed you and that I posted out on Twitter and mock it up through like Photoshop as a metal yep. pipe and just kind of put it out there in the ether and let some amazing yep. artisan make it so that then I can buy it. <laughs> <laughs> be amazing. <laughs> All right, man. Well, uh, yeah, that's. I think that's going to do it for us, right? Yeah, man. Next week's going to be fun. Hey, it's going to be a blast. Eat, eat some breakfast to, uh, next uh, next week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Scotch in the middle of the day. Yeah. It's going to be fun. You want, you want something on your belly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go have a day. See you, brother. All right, guys. Thank you all so much. Yeah, it's good to, good to see you all, man. Always great to enjoy the first of the week with you. <laughs> we'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Bye.